Hi, everyone. We're so excited to have you all join us today. We're going to give it just a couple more minutes for folks to hop on um, and for us to get our Facebook Live going in case people want to join us there. But otherwise, we're excited to have you. We'll be starting in just a moment. Welcome, I'm gonna turn my video on so you can see who's talking. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar, Voter Registration 101. Uh, it, this webinar is co-hosted by National Voter Registration Day and Nonprofit Vote. I'm Debbie Lombardi, the Program Director for National Voter Registration Day. I use she, her pronouns and I'll be kind of guiding through the webinar today, but we're supported by awesome staff like Travis uh, Morin, who is the communication specialist for National Voter Registration Day, and Caitlin Donnelly, who is the program director for Nonprofit Vote. Before we get started, I'm going to cover some quick housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded. You will receive an email with the recording and the slides uh, next week. Second, there will be a live question and answer session at the end of the presentations please use the Q&A box to ask our panelists questions. Uh, lastly, you can share comments or audio or visual issues with us or that you're experiencing via the chat that's being monitored by our staff. Thank you, and let's get started. Travis, can we go to the next slide? First off, we wanna give a thank you to our sponsors for National Voter Registration Day. Their support helps us provide grants to partners like you, uh, ship thousands of posters and stickers for free. Hopefully if you've signed up as a partner, um, you check the box to get a tick and you'll get uh, to get swag and you'll get posters and stickers. And it enables us to build uh, resources and host webinars and more. Next slide. Great, so to, before we uh, jump in, I wanna say what is National Voter Registration Day? We are a nonpartisan civic holiday to get Americans registered and hashtag vote ready. We're held on a Tuesday of September every year with the next one on September 20th, 2022. So if it's not on your calendars yet, please do, do so. You may notice this is slightly different um, from previous years where it's been held on the fourth Tuesday. Uh, this is the third Tuesday this year. Um, and it's a coordinated, coordinated day of events to share registration opportunities before state deadlines. So why should you consider celebrating National Voter Registration Day? I know many of you are already signed up, but in case you aren't, uh, as many as one in four eligible Americans are not registered to vote or are unsure if they're registered to vote. So this is a great opportunity to provide people reminders uh, similarly, millions of Americans miss elections each year due to registration problems or missing deadlines. And this is a way for us to talk about those upcoming deadlines and make sure that they're ready. 
and you and your community have unique and trusted relationships and you can help change this by providing information to people that know and trust you to share this information. And we have big goals for 2022. We're hoping to register over 800,000 people to vote or help them update their registration on September 20th, bringing us to a lifetime total of 5.5 million registered voters. We're hoping to engage over 4,000 community partners, like pe people like, including people like you. We're hoping to help voters get hashtag vote ready for the midterms. You'll see that hashtag around as we get closer. And we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. So we hope you'll be there to celebrate with us on September 20th. On today's agenda, we'll be talking about voter registration 101. Uh, we already did the introduction piece, Next, we'll talk about nonprofit vote and resources and election laws. Uh, we'll, then we'll hear stories from the field from You Can Vote and Move Texas. And we're super excited about our speakers. So first up is Caroline Mack. Uh, Caroline is the Evaluations and Learning Manager at Nonprofit Vote, where she supports and evaluates nonprofits doing in-person and digital voter engagement across multiple states. Her involvement in this space began a few years ago as a student at MIT, where she registered to vote for the first time and encouraged her peers to do the same. She was awarded the MIT Institute Award for Bridge Builder. As a second generation Asian American, she is proud to continue supporting the power nonprofit voter engagement has to build communities. Caroline, welcome. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Gosh, that was a couple of years ago, so it's moderately embarrassing, um, but I'm excited to talk about the stuff uh, we're about to share today. Um, Travis, you next. So I'm glad we get to share this important stuff uh, on behalf of Nonprofit Vote with a lot of eager faces today. Nonprofit Vote wants people like you here to feel confident and prepared to get involved, even without any experience. So here's how we do that. We often host webinar trainings like these. Um, we develop checklists and fact sheets on voter registration and state laws. Um, oh, uh, Travis, I think the slides are missing. Is that just me? <laughs> um, Caroline, no, you're not correct. just you. Sorry about that. I, yep, one difficulty. It's coming up. Okay, cool. Um, I'll just uh, keep going. So let's see. Uh, we just develop fact sheets um, and checklists on voter engagement. So, like, not staying nonpartisan. Uh, we partner with national and state nonprofits to do voter engagement, and we develop cool swag and posters. So, you know, all kinds of stuff. And the first thing that we're going to do today uh, cover is non staying nonpartisan. So I'm going to wait for that slide to come back up because I think that one's nice to see. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Then you go to the next one. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is just how to stay nonpartisan. And if anyone asks or you didn't know, the IRS explicitly says that 501c3 organizations may do voter registration and get out the vote in a nonpartisan way. So when that means not favoring or doing this work in a biased way that opposes or favors a candidate. You go to the next slide. So when you do your voter engagement, here are your main do's and don'ts. Don't express support or opposition to any candidate or party, including wearing campaign swag. And don't suggest which party to affiliate with during registration. So if someone asks, you can, what I've heard people do is like, oh, um, say what past presidents their party. So like Obama was Democrat, like Bush was a Republican, but don't suggest like a party. And then do register anyone eligible, i.e. 18 plus by election day, and a citizen who is interested regardless of their politics. You can go to the next one. If you forget, you can find this all on the partner agreement list when you signed up as a partner. And it says be nonpartisan, be inclusive. So you can always refer to this list if you forget. Okay, so now that that's over, let's jump into the fun stuff. You can go to the next one. So, really, how do you want to celebrate NVRD? Um, National Voter Registration Day means registering voters, and depending on where you're at or what you can do, you've got options. Next. 
You can do voter registration in a few ways. Um, you can do it via social media and email. Uh, you can do it in person, but digitally. And you can do it in person, but via paper. So if you do it via social media or email, you will probably use an online voter registration tool. So sending a link to an online portal that people can register on. It's easy to do, but it's lower impact than say a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you've got a wide potential reach if you've got a big list or a big following. You can do in-person digital. So, uh, you know, also using online tools, but maybe on phone, tablet, uh, oh yes, sorry, <laughs> not tables, tablet, <laughs> typo, um, computers. And it's easier to handle than paper, but it is harder for people with no IDs to register online in most states. And then the last way you can do it is in person via paper. So you actually print out and give the form to people to register. Anyone can do this regardless of whether or not they have an ID, supposedly that they're eligible, but it is harder to manage. There are more rules. So you can go to the next slide. Um, we will be spending more time talking about paper today, but I will give a little bit of a checklist on digital. But just here's some pictures of what each can look like, you know, social media, Instagram, uh, someone holding a tablet, or just like a table. So you've got options. Next. So if you want to do digital, um, over 40 states provide online voter registration. So it's pretty likely you're in a state where people can register online. But if you're on like a college campus that maybe has people from different states, or if you just work in multiple states because you're a national organization, you might want to use a national portal that makes accessing each state's online voter registration a little easier. So your prep checklist starts with what registration tool are you going to use? Are you going to use a national one like Rock the Vote, CanIVote.org? It'll link to all the different state ones. Or if you're working in just one state, does your state have online voter registration? And then um, what kind of devices will you use? Will you lean on people's phones? Will you bring a tablet? Will you have a QR code like the one on the left, which is on the actually back of the poster. If you sign up to be a partner, um, you'll get these free posters. And on the back, there's this QR code that goes directly to the National Voter Registration Day online registration tool. So easy, you know, you've got a poster for you already. Um, and you want to just check if you're doing digital, like make sure you've got internet access, make sure you've got battery, hotspot, those important things that don't kind of derail <laughs> things. Um, and yeah, and you just want to take note uh, if people does if people don't have an ID, like they may, you might just want to know have a protocol of how you want to help them. Do you want to have a form just in case? Do you want to just walk them through and tell them like here's another way to register that kind of thing. And then lastly is, are you also helping people check their registration? Since most people think that they're registered, um, it's good to like say, oh, what can we check it for you? And even if you're doing paper, sometimes it's nice to offer this digital component because you can check on the spot for them. Okay, so that's digital. Um, the rest of the time we're gonna spend on paper and because there's just a lot of state laws around them. So next. So here's, um, uh, when it loads. Oh, oh. Yes, thank you. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. So for paper voter registration, here's a checklist for you. Um, so you want to use, you want to decide, am I going to use the national or the state voter registration form? Where do I need to go to get the forms? What do I need to do? Is there anything required or prohibited when helping voters with voter registration? And lastly, how do you submit those forms to the proper elections office? All of these things you can find on the Fair Election Center Voter Registration Drives Guide link. Um, and so that's uh, on the left, we've got some screenshot. I think I actually forgot to put the link. So actually, um, nonprofit vote staff support, if you could throw in the link in the chat, that would be fantastic to the Fair Election Center guide. Anyway, um, this website is run by lawyers. They have every single state's voter registration drive guide. So you can answer all these questions um, on those guides and I'll walk you through a few screenshots of where to find that. So you can go next. But the first question is, do you want the national or the state voter reg form? Um, some state forms uh, look a little different than the national one. The national one is, uh, like you should check the state if it's used, but almost pretty much all states will accept this form. So it's always something that you can use. But for example, in this um, screenshot, 
Arizona provides an option for voters to request a mail ballot on their voter reg form directly. So obviously the national one doesn't have that because not all states can do that. Um, so you might want to just weigh those considerations and then also consider any language needs. The national form is in a lot of languages. Um, many states don't even have Spanish. So you just kind of weigh those options, choose which one. Next. Okay. So the next one was, what do I need to do to get the forms? So on the guides, uh, when you click on your state, if you're working in a state, um, you wanna check the getting started section if your state requires any training or certification before you get started. And then on the bottom, underneath that will be obtaining applications. And that is the instructions for how your state requires you to request forms and or whether they prohibit copying or like printing of the blank forms. And there are reasons for that. Um, for the national form, you just download and print it. There aren't really like specific state regulations around it, but we do recommend you to like use the state form if you're working in one state, just kind of build that relationship with your board of elections. And also there are some fields that are on there that the national form does not have. Next. So here's an example of what an application, oh, go back, or, or to, to go forward. To one more slide. Okay, um, so here's an example of like an oh whoa, an application distribution plan. Oh, I think I think the slides keep uh, changing. If you can go back, Travis. Okay, stop. Um, so this is just an example of a application plan for like how to get a um, voter registration application from Nevada, because Nevada requires you to actually um, submit a form requesting uh, their state forms. You cannot just print their state forms. Um, you are not allowed to do that. So just make sure you check uh, the voter registration drive guide, that obtaining application section for how to get forms. It's like kind of your first step. Okay, next slide. Okay, so once you have like gotten your forms, you've maybe gotten any training that you needed or certification, now you need to know, is anything required or prohibited when helping voters with voter registration? So you wanna look under the handling application section for how to handle missing information on forms. Say like, you know, there's two check boxes on the voter reg form. Uh, one is I'm a citizen or I am 18 plus, cause that's kind of the eligibility for voting 18 plus by election day. Um, if someone forgot to check that box, it is extremely unfortunate because the majority of states, if not all, I think, do not allow you to fill in missing information. So it's really important that you check on the spot, like, can you, like, did they fill those out? Because they, you can't really, like, fill that in for them. Even if you know, like, yes, that person was 18 plus, it's really, um, you want to check that section for your state's laws. Some states also require a signature when their assistance is pro when assistance is provided. So if you help them out, there's like a little spot on the form that's like, hey, sign here, just, you know, they got help from someone. And then the last is that some states require voters to receive like a receipt of the interaction. You go to the next slide, just here's an example of what that looks like um, in Texas. So Tessa will speak to, uh, I'm from Texas. I'm sure they're very familiar with what this looks like. But um, on the bottom of the form, there's this little registration receipt. So like it says name of applicant, name of volunteer deputy registrar. So here's an example of just like, if you're helping someone register to vote, Texas requires them to like write the name of the person registering, write the name of the person helping them to register. And then they just take that with them. So most states don't require this, but you just wanna double check, you know, in this state guide, is this something that you need to do? Okay, next slide. So now that you've got all these completed forms, how do you submit them? That's the last question. You wanna check handling applications, submitting completed applications for how to submit the forms. And there's an important thing in here. It's not just like mailing it to back to the elections office, but sometimes there are turnaround windows on submitting completed forms. Also, you wanna know the deadlines for voter registration, whether your state has same day registration, and like if there are any deadlines around the online voter registration, because usually same day does not apply to registering online. So if you go to the next, here's an example of um, Massachusetts, our home state, of like what uh, kind of submitting applications a turnaround window means. 
So under handling applications in the submitting completed applications, it says a completed voter registration form shall be mailed, transmitted, or otherwise delivered within five calendar days of completion. So meaning if you registered someone on Monday and they dated it as Monday, you really should like return it by Friday. Um, and try not to hold on to it. We suggest returning it as soon as possible, really within 48 hours, um, so you don't lose it. But you know, check your state if there's anything around that. Next. So in summary, also that was a mouthful. So here's a picture of some goats. <laughs> um, and they were a great group that did uh, celebrated NVOD last year. But um, here's uh, your prep checklist again, just as a summary. Do you want the national or state form? What do you need to do to get those forms? Is there anything that you need to do or you can't do in helping people? And how do you submit those forms? Now remember, you can find this all in the Fair Election Center, Voter Reg Drive Guides. I think also um, they'll be on our website eventually under resources if they're not up already. Maybe no problem with that. can check us on that if it's in the chat. Okay, so last slides next. When you're doing this, um, there are just a couple questions that will help you make sure you've got a tight ship running. Uh, and like make sure that if there are laws in your state that you can actually follow them. So here's just like a couple questions that's good for you to think about if you're planning a team around this for paper, who's getting it, who's checking them, who's storing them, you know, on their car, all strung about, coffee spilled on it, and who's just making sure the forms are submitted to the correct elections office, because there are instructions um, per state or per national form on where they're supposed to go next. And also, um, we have a what is called National Voter Registration Day event tally sheet. So it kind of asks like, oh, how many people did you ask? How many pieces of paper? So having a paper trail can also be really good of like, oh, it says that we marked five forms, but I only have two. Like, what happened to the other three? You know, it really sucks if someone registered with you, thought they were going to be registered, and like maybe the form got lost, which is a very honest thing to do. We want to make sure that doesn't happen as much as possible, though. Next. So when you're doing voter reg, you also might end up with some questions from people on like how to vote, ballot info. And so here are just some resources on like those things that you should really lean on. Like you don't need to be an expert on voting. You shouldn't. Um, and like 866 our vote, for example, they have a voice, uh, a voter text chat call line um, that they can help people with. Uh, and there's also just all these other resources on ballot info, like your state. So just take a look at these things that other people have spent a lot of time researching. Okay, so next slide. So in summary, um, when you get started, figure out how you're collecting forms, how you're celebrating NVRD. You want to do it social, digital, paper, both. Um, get the materials, any devices you need. Make sure you know your state election laws for third party registration. All our orgs that are doing voter registration are called third party. Um, and yeah, so if you're collecting paper, make sure you've got some of those accountability. And of course, keep it nonpartisan. And for more info, you can find a lot of the stuff on our field organizing guide that Debbie just put in the chat. So I think I went a little over time. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, thanks. And I'm going to turn it back to you. You're fantastic, Caroline. Thank you so much for sharing so many so much valuable information with us. I just want to send two quick reminders to everyone. One is if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the Q&A box and we will try to answer it later. And the second is uh, this is being recorded and slides and the webinar recording will be sent out sometime next week. And with that, I want to start our stories from the field by introducing Caitlin Metzger. Uh, Caitlin lives in Durham and has worked for You Can Vote since 2017. She is the deputy director and works statewide to make sure all voters know their rights, know when to vote, and especially loves to talk about local offices. She also supports the thousands of You Can Vote volunteers to make sure we can reach all North Carolina voters. Previous roles include a homelessness prevention program coordinator and ACA enrollment expert. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Debbie. Hey, y'all. Good afternoon. Happy to be here with you and share uh, what we have learned at You Can Vote. Um, as Debbie mentioned, I am Caitlin Metzger. I'm the deputy director, and I've been working in this field um, 
for several years and we have learned a lot of lessons from working with first time voters to working with voters who didn't know they were eligible. Um, and then uh, we were able to register them based on them being eligible. So you can vote, you can go to the next slide. Yep, you can vote um, is a nonpartisan nonprofit group. We work in North Carolina and we envision a representative democracy that reflects the diversity of our state includes all voices and aims to serve all North Carolinians. Our mission is to educate register and empower voters. And we do that every single year. So some organizations work um, in the big years, big, I'm using air quotes, um, in the um, even years, but you can vote started in 2014 and we have had more demand every single year and grown every single year. Um, and now we are in more counties than ever with more staff than ever, because this information is so critical and so many people might not know where to look for voter registration information. So some things, a couple of things, oh, can you go back one slide, please? One thing, a couple of things that we've learned. Um, a lot of folks who do voter registration shifts walk up to voters and just say, hey, are you registered? Um, and I'm gonna encourage you not to start there because first of all, a lot of folks are already registered. Um, most people who are eligible might be registered already or they might just need to update their address. Um, and so if you start with a yes or no question that is, are you registered? Um, if they say yes and keep moving, it's hard to start that conversation and go a little bit deeper. One thing that we've learned in a shift, and I'm calling a two hour shift, that's generally what our volunteers do. Um, one thing to keep in mind, are you going to a site where you often see people doing voter registration? Um, or are you going somewhere where what we consider like a pop-up and will people be surprised to see you? Um, in terms of setting your expectations, if you go somewhere where regularly people register voters, so think, you know, festival, music festivals, college campuses, um, large gatherings, you probably often see people registering people to vote. And so that can help increase the number of registrations that you complete if folks know that you might be there doing that job. They might expect to see people there. Um, we've heard people say, oh yeah, I knew I'd run into someone. I, I do need to register. I've been looking for you or waiting for you. Another consideration, um, are you talking to a population that definitely needs voter registration, that most certainly needs voter registration? Generally, that's high schools and colleges, right? Most of the time, it's young people that definitely need re registration. Another example um, is might be, depending on your state laws, people who are newly eligible, uh, people who are becoming U.S. citizens and then eligible, people who are returning home from incarceration might be eligible. And so if you're working with a population that definitely needs voter registration, that's just one thing to consider um, in expecting how many voter registrations you can get in one shift. Another thing that we've learned is that a lot of times, almost every time, we do a lot more education than registration. So two things that we assume about everyone, we assume that they need the latest rules and dates and uh, how to register. And we assume that most are eligible and registered. And so that can help you and your organizations and volunteers um, just keep in mind that you might talk to 40 or 50 people in a two hour shift, but you might only register two. And some people think that that is um, bad or really low or um, incredibly uh, you know, slow. But actually what we've learned is that that's pretty standard. And so it's, you know, except for if you're in high schools, which you register every single person, um, but it, but you're doing the education piece too. And so every single person that you talk to, even if they are registered, that doesn't mean that they know when the next election is and how to find their sample ballot and the other details that really help encourage lifelong civic engagement. So two things that I uh, have found that work the best, um, have you moved since you last voted is a great way as opposed to saying, are you registered? Because it assumes that people are registered Right, and it just means, uh, have you moved since then? Um, and a lot of times people will kind of stop in their tracks and really have to think. And most of the time that means they need to register, right? If they can't remember the last time they registered um, or if they aren't sure how to update their registration or look to see if they're registered, um, that is one way to start a conversation. Um, the other thing that is, has worked really, uh, really well 
is to ask, have you, do you know where to find your sample ballot? And that'll be more helpful when you do this work in September as we approach November. That might not work as well now in June, <laughs> but if you know um, how to look up someone's sample ballot, that will really help stop, stop people in their tracks and easier to start a conversation that way. All right, next slide. So a couple more keys to success that we recommend know your local voting rules. Um, and that might seem very basic. And um, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. Caroline mentioned this. It's very important to know, though, because a lot of voters and even organizations might be going off what they learned in 2020. And of course, during the pandemic, during the first year of the pandemic in 2020, many states changed their laws um, and actually saw some expansion of voting rights. Um, but that's not always the case now. So, for example, in North Carolina, we had an expansion of um, ex extended eligibility for vote by mail. Some of those rules have changed. And so if you're talking to folks who haven't voted or haven't thought about voting since 2020, they might be going off of information from 2020. So it's really critical that you make sure you know the absolute latest and what's what in your state in 2022. Um, I did mention this just a second ago about the sample ballot. You'll hear people ask, how do I find out about the who, right? And I know that this is a nonpartisan activity. And so we're not talking about candidates and we're not um, suggesting anyone in particular, but it is helpful to be able to point to resources like Vote 411 that the League of Women Voters does, where folks can learn about the candidates on their own time, <laughs> not with you probably. Um, but again, just having that tool to be able to show them how to do that research. Because it's one thing to get folks registered. It's another thing to get folks feeling confident and comfortable to actually make a voting plan and go vote. And that's one way to increase that. Phone a friend. This is what we often tell our volunteers um, and our civic fellows. Um, don't accidentally share misinformation because you're either going off something that you learned in 2020, or you might say, I've heard some, some volunteers say something like, well, um, I think that this is probably the case. You should do this and then we'll just see. No, <laughs> let's not guess, right? There's a couple really important things. Um, first, just to help that voter know the rules, but also to make sure that you're covered and that you're not telling someone to do something illegal. Um, and so phone a friend, call that 866-R-VOTE number, call your, um, your other nonprofit votes partners, folks who do this work regularly, check in with someone and don't accidentally tell someone the wrong thing. Um, and then share your experience. I keep a bag, uh, or sorry, a strip of these in my bag at all times. These are the our registered to vote today stickers. Um, people who are on social media love a selfie with a sticker. And so since it's not November yet and we can't get the I voted sticker, um, this is going to be a great tool for you in September because if you can register a voter or update them, update their address, and have a sticker or some of the swag that has been mentioned, um, folks are gonna love that. <laughs> You'd be surprised how excited people get for a sticker. And so having stickers and swag with you, um, we call that triple the vote because if you talk to that one person and then say, hey, you know, tell three friends that you talked to us, tell three friends how to look at your, your sample ballot, share this information with three people, um, they've tripled their vote because that one person that you interacted with then can help share the information that folks need for this fall. All right, next slide. All right, a couple last best, best practices here. Um, communication approach, active tabling. This means if you haven't done this a lot and you're not used to being up and moving around and approaching folks, that can be a little bit intimidating, but I wanna recommend active tabling. If you have a table and some chairs and you're sitting there waiting for folks to come over, um, again, unless you're in a high school and every single person needs to register, um, that's not gonna be the best way to talk to the most number of people. And so active tabling um, is a great tool for you to be able to have a great experience. That's how your organization and your volunteers can have a get great experience because they'll talk to more people and have more interactions. Um, don't worry about someone who's uninterested uh, or, or hurried, um, because not every person that you talk to is going to want to have a conversation. And you know what? That's OK. Um, again, you might talk to 40 or 50 people on one shift, um, maybe two of them, you know, kind of brush you off and um, or, you know, put on their headphones when they see you approaching them. Um, that's OK. 
don't worry, don't let it hurt your feelings. Um, just brush that off and go to the next person because there's a lot of folks who do need this information and who will be excited to hear from you. Um, the next thing, oh, one last thing on this best practice. Um, we really find that being supportive and forcing our, or encouraging ourselves not to use shame as a tactic is very important because especially if you're talking to new voters and young voters, um, you got to meet people where they are. Um, and I know a lot of folks are really thrilled and pumped and excited to register. Um, and a lot of people are really thrilled and excited to vote in November, but not everyone is. And so if you expect every single person to be thrilled, you might feel a little bit let down. Um, but I really encourage you to meet people where they are and let them tell you what's important to them. Um, and so what I often tell our volunteers is, you know, try not to preach at people to say, you've got to do this, it's so important, and pull them through, pull them along in the conversation. Um, instead, turn it to them. You know, if someone says, yeah, I'm not registered, but it's not really important. It's really more effective for you as a communicator to just ask calmly and respectfully, well, can you tell me what you do care about? Because if they mention education, we can tie that to why registration is important. If they mention healthcare, we can tie that to why registration is important. If they mention schools and um, bike lanes and environmental safety, we can tie that to why registration is important. So listening to folks and meeting people where they are is gonna be a much more effective way to have this conversation and to register folks who then will hear you when you tell them the information about voting in November. So those are a couple of tricks that we've learned um, I know we'll do questions at the very end, but uh, my contact information is on this next slide and you'll get the slides uh, a little bit later and I will turn it back over to Debbie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And if you want, you can drop your contact info or information about you can vote in the chat for everyone as well. Um, Awesome. And so we'll see all our speakers again when we do questions. But now I want to turn it over to Tessa Mitterhoff of Move Texas. Uh, Tessa is currently building youth power in Travis County as the regional field coordinator with Move Texas in Austin. She previously served as a committee member with Homes Not Handcuffs fighting for housing justice and as an organizer with the human rights campaign during the 2020 election cycle. Tessa was a top 10 volunteer deputy registrar in the 2018 to 2020 cycle, registering over 500 voters. That's amazing, Tessa. We're excited to hear from you. Cool. Um, thank you so much, Debbie. I'm so um, excited to be here today. Um, yeah, I can just kind of go through um, first, like a little bit about MOVE and what we do. Um, so we are a statewide organization. We operate in eight counties throughout Texas. We actually started um, as a student organization back in 2013 at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Um, and we've, yeah, since grown into, you know, a big organization with folks throughout the state. Um, we also have, uh, you know, a big student chapter program. Um, and we're on, I counted recently, like how many campuses we're on. I think it's about 40 campuses throughout the state of Texas, which is really um, so amazing. And it's so cool to see like the work we're able to do um, statewide. We um, focus on um, registering and mobilizing um, underrepresented youth communities uh, throughout the state. Um, and we also, you know, we do, um, our kind of C3 voter registration. And then we also have C4 advocacy um, campaigns as well. So it's, you know, it's a bit of a range of different things that we do, but um, yeah, like Debbie said, I am the regional field coordinator for Travis County. So that is um, Austin, Texas. Um, so we operate, you know, at the University of Texas and St. Edwards and also the community colleges here in Travis County. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go through um, kind of my process that I take when I want to plan an event, especially um, a voter registration event for National Voter Registration Day. Um, so I've been involved with uh, National Voter Registration Day for the past few years with different organizations. Um, but last year I was involved with, with MOVE. So I just kind of wanted to run through some key questions that I think are important to ask. Um, oh, can you just go to the previous slide, sorry. 
Okay, so some key questions um, that I think are really um, important to think about when you are planning um, a National Voter Registration Day um, event. So the first thing I think about is who do I want to register, right? So I want to register young people. So in that, um, in our definition of that, that would be folks between the ages of 18 and 30. Um, so kind of considering um, where those folks are. So a really obvious place to first look is um, high school and college campuses, right? So we have uh, many high schools throughout Austin, and then we have yeah our, our focus campuses as well. Um, also considering um, various community partners, local businesses, um, different uh, venues throughout town, thinking about like what their um, general demographic, their clientele are, figuring out where where those folks might be on Tuesday, September 20th, which is National Voter Registration Day this year. So, you know, it might take a bit of exploration. Um, you know, we do our work all throughout the year. It's not just during election cycles. So a lot of it is trial and error, you know, like showing up places, seeing if we have a lot of success and um, keeping track of that data to see like, okay, these places are really successful. These places um, really allow us to meet the people that we want to meet. So um, yeah, those are kind of the first two things that I think about. Who do I want to register? Where would might those people be on September 20th? Um, next slide. Got a little cute picture. We we do a lot of pizza at the polls. So um, if people have, um, you know, long wait times, we want to encourage folks to stay in line. So a lot of times we'll we'll hand out pizza, which is really fun. Um, okay, so I think that the next questions that I think about are partnerships. Right? It's like there are so many people who have so, who have common goals as you who also want to register young people. Um, so thinking about what partnerships do I have, who can I work with, who can I talk to, to both make it a bit of an easier lift, but also expand your impact um, on National Voter Registration Day. So um, this photo right here on the left um, is an event we did at St. Edwards University, um, which is a college in South Austin. Um, and we have some folks with MOVE, we have some folks with um, an organization called Texas Rising. And then we also have folks with an organization called Ignite, which um, focuses on getting more uh, women to run and get elected for, for office. So um, these are you know, some folks that we work with on a regular basis um, and uh, are really important to our success. And having, you know, a, a larger impact, um, it's much easier to make a larger impact when you have like a team, It you feed off each other's energy. It's much easier to have um, success when you have like a really enthusiastic group of people rather than you just kind of showing up as yourself, which is also important. And sometimes you just, you got to go out it go at it alone, but having a really strong team, I think is, is vital. Um, and then the other question is what new partnerships can I work on? What businesses like, do I want to reach out to? And sometimes it is like a numbers game. You got to reach out to a bunch of folks, um, to find the people who really want to work with you. And then when you find them, they become really loyal and they, they'll they probably invite you back and become really, uh, really solid partners. So yeah, those are a couple more questions that I ask. Um, and then, yeah, we'll move on to the next slide. So um, I think this is my, might be the most important question is who can help make this happen, right? So it's our partners, but also thinking about what is our capacity? Do we have student organizations who will help us? Do we have a solid base of volunteers? And if not, do we need to find volunteers and how will we find those folks? Also, if you have, you know, coworkers who, um, who are in your area, uh, are they able to help out on the day of with, with logistical support? Um, so really thinking um, before you make any confirmed plans, who do I have? Um, on my team and kind of going from there and deciding kind of how much you can do 
um, on that on that one day. So yeah, really, really vital question to think about. Um, and then just the next slide. So um, I'm very much a visual learner, as you can see, I have a lot of pictures. I don't like really wordy slides. So I kind of made like a little collage about um, a potential event for National Voter Registration Day. So our largest campus here in Austin is the University of Texas at Austin. It has over um, 50,000 students. So a lot of folks to register. Um, and we have a lot of uh, groups who you know do this type of work um, especially at UT. So thinking about what partners would make sense. So Texas Rising is another nonpartisan organization um, working to get young folks to be more engaged um, by, through voting, through um, different uh, forms of uh, engagement, through like showing up and testifying, things like that. Um, thinking about what locations you want to be at. So um, right here, I have two locations that are at UT. So the Texas Union and the Speedway, both of those are huge, um, you know, thoroughfares through which like students um, move through on a day-to-day -day basis. I also included a photo of a local business, which is, um, you know, this is a, a local resale shop that's right near campus. So combining your efforts through both being on campus, but also popular off campus locations. And then thinking about what supplies you need, getting forms, clipboards, water. It's been very, very hot here in Texas. So making sure that your volunteers are hydrated and safe and have everything that they need. Um, so this is kind of, you know, my little mood board of a sample event um, for National Voter Registration Day and kind of walks you through how I think about, um, you know, planning a really successful and solid event um, for National Voter Registration Day. But yeah, that's um, about all I have for uh, my part of the presentation. I know we're a little bit behind on time, so I'm just going to wrap it up right now, but thank you all for being here. We're a little bit behind, but we're doing just fine as we're about to move to our question and answer portion. So I'm going to invite uh, all of our panelists to come back on video. Caitlin, Caroline, Tessa, you can stay on video. Thank you. And we're going to stop sharing screen, Travis, if that works for you. Awesome. So uh, you all submitted some great questions. And I want to start with one for Caroline, since it's been the longest since she spoke. <laughs> um, what are the rules for college registration? Do they register at home or do they use their address at college? Oh, yes. Um, I think Caitlin answered that one. Um, but basically they, they can register at their college address um, or at home. They just can only register in one place. Uh, I think the best place to also double check this if there are any like federal student loan issues that might come up, I think is Campus Vote Project, but I will grab that link and throw it in the chat for you because they've got good like FAQs on stuff because they actually research this all the time. Thank you, Caroline. Um, Caitlin, the next question is for you. Uh, you have two questions. One is just, where can we get those stickers from or have them made? And the second is, can you give some examples of active tabling? Yeah, um, I, you know, I'm not totally sure who gave us these stickers, but I think we order them on like from maybe Walmart or Target. Um, I would just Google there. It says I registered to vote today. I would just Google it and see who has them. Um, sometimes we find swag like that at our um, state board of elections, which in North Carolina, we don't have a secretary of state that runs elections. We have our state board uh, agency. So sometimes you can get some of their materials and distribute. So I would check locally and see who might have some swag. Um, another option is to look on social media and see what other groups in your state, what they're using. Um, because I know we get requests from other nonprofits. Um, when we get closer to election time, we have like our pledge to vote stickers, which is a little bit of a different color. People love those too. So um, reach out to your local local organizations and just see who has what and maybe crowdsource a little bit of the stickers. Um, the second question about active tabling, what I mean by that is, you know, be in front of the table, um, be approaching folks. Don't just wait for folks to come over and ask you what you're doing. Um, I think on National Voter Registration Day, a lot of campuses and organizations probably expect to see people doing registration, um, but not everyone knows what National Voter Registration Day is. Um, and so if you are able to 
proactively approach folks um, and use one of those intro lines like, hey, have you moved since you last voted? Or, hey, do you know, um, do you know how to look up your sample ballot? Or um, do you know how to make a voting plan? Or some one of those kind of questions that makes folks kind of stop and, and think about it. Um, I think it's more likely, or we've seen that it's more likely that they'll actually come over to the table, look at your materials, maybe get registered if they need to, um, as opposed to just waiting for folks to read that sign or read that poster and then self-select that they need to come register. Um, and so we just try to encourage folks to, you know, sit down when you need a break for sure, but don't just wait at the table behind, you know, don't just sit behind the table and wait for folks to come over. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And Tessa, I wanted to give you a quick moment to show off the sticker that you were talking about. Yeah, um, so we actually have an artist fellowship program and we work with a lot of amazing young um, Texans throughout the state. Um, so we have a couple, we have this one, I think it's backwards, um, but it's in Spanish and it says the future is in your hands. And then we have this one as well. Um, they're on our website. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend if you know you have like funding um, or capacity to like work with local artists and union print shops that's something that we've been doing a lot lately you get really like solid quality while also being able to support really great artists so that's that's what we've been doing which i think has been really exciting great thank you so much and i'm gonna hand you a another question which um you talked about this a little bit but how can people get their foot in the door at grocery stores or malls or convenience stores or gas stations if they want to do registration outside of them yeah, I mean, um, it's really, so much of this is trial and error, right? It's um, some places you can easily find contact information if there's a website. Um, sometimes if we work a lot with local parks, um, so a lot of times they'll have a community engagement person. Um, if it's somewhere that's like more of a local business, um, just walking in and being like introducing yourself, um, especially, uh, you know, I think it's really important to establish relationships. So um, not just being like, hey, it's National Voter Registration Day. Can we come do voter registration? But trying to build up those relationships over time, um, just so it's like less of a transactional partnership and, and more you're like, you know, building these community relationships that you can tap into. And they might reach out to you in the future if they're having, um, you know, special events. Um, I find it's a lot more difficult if it's more of a corporate partner if it's like a very very large business um, it might be harder to get um you know approval um so definitely recommend um, more local based organizations and you know calling emailing walking in whatever whatever really works um, for you um and and also following up people are busy so just because they don't respond doesn't mean they're not interested. Um, so it's it's never a bad idea to to follow up, um, you know, in the next like week or two after. Awesome. Um, in the chat, so I know not everyone can see this, but someone said there's a place in Helena, Montana, that's a good place for voter registration. And I just wanted to point that out because I'm from Montana and I'm so glad there's folks doing great registration there. Um, so I'm going to try and do two more questions. Um, you know, I know we're getting close to time. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, but one, I'm gonna leave kind of open-ended in case anyone has specific ideas, but how do you diffuse a challenging question? For example, if they ask a person if we think you should have to have an ID in order to vote. Um, the person also notes that this is a divisive topic in South Carolina for them. So how do you diffuse a difficult question when you receive it? Um, I can start, Debbie. That's okay. We we have um, a photo ID challenge in North Carolina, and um, I would say most of our experiences hasn't been, um, people are not asking our opinion, they're just asking what the latest is. And so I think sticking to the facts is always a great, um, great way if you're not advocating, you know, if you're doing voter registration, you're not advocating for or against vote, photo ID. Um, and so I would just ask them, you know, do you know the latest in your state and are you ready to vote in the fall? Um, and oftentimes when we get kind of goaded into a political conversation, the best thing to do is just have one or two sentences like, 
you know, we're just here registering all voters and making sure you're ready for November 8th. And so just stick to that script. Um, I do I do think, again, it's important to know what the latest rules are because some folks might be asking you um, for more information. Um, and so definitely know if your state requires that or if there's a waiver form or whatever the local rules are. Um, and I think point people to the people who get to make that decision. Maybe it's in your, you know, your legislature in your state, or maybe it's your secretary of state. Um, but just say, you know, maybe one other sentence that you could kind of have in your back pocket is, you know, we're here registering all voters and making sure you're ready for November. If you have a legislative question, you know, you know, send that over to your legislative, your NC House and NC Senate. Well, that's North Carolina, but your state house and your state Senate. Um, because those are the folks that get to make those rules. So I would just kind of just pivot a little bit and, um, you know, certainly don't give into it because we're not here to argue with folks. And there's so much confusion that I would just maybe try to turn it into, here's the latest, we're making sure you know, if you want to take action or advocate, that's a different lane. Thank you so much for that answer, Caitlin. Um, Carolyn, I wanted to ask you another question is, do you have any advice on what else I can do besides active tabling and sharing on social media? Do people still canvas neighborhoods and go door to door? <laughs> and if so, would I just look at my state's rules regarding that? Yes, yes, sorry, I did not include um, door to door tabling. That's definitely an option. I think it's sort of one that's a little more involved so that maybe it's not the 101 voter reg, but like maybe 102. <laughs> Um, but yeah, people definitely do door knocking. Um, I think uh, the same kind of, it always says voter registration drive guide and drive is maybe sometimes associated with like a table, but even if you're doing like door to door knocking and as long as you're like collecting forms and you're helping people in some way, like return the form or like fill it out or something, um, that still counts as a voter rich drive. So you can still use those same um, for election center guides. Uh, I'm seeing Kayla and Debbie nod. You guys are kind of <laughs> experts on these. So definitely jump in uh, if there's anything I missed. But I think that's, I think that's uh, all I have. Thank you so much, Caroline. It's 2.58 we wanna make sure we end our webinar on time. There were a lot of amazing questions so we didn't get to answer all of them. Uh, we'll do our best to answer the rest of those questions as we send out information and materials with you all. I wanna give a huge thank you again to all of our speakers and our support staff. So uh, Caitlin at You Can Vote for presenting, Tessa for presenting, Caroline for presenting, and Caitlin and from Nonprofit Vote and Travis for uh, being support staff on the webinar and being a part of this. And thank you all for attending. Um, if you have questions about National Voter Registration Day, you can reach out to us at info at nationalvoterregistrationday.org. And some of you had questions about swag. If you signed up as a partner, you'll be receiving your swag and a confirmation of that in a few weeks. If you haven't signed up as a partner, uh, we'll share the link out with you and we send out all of the materials. But Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day.